Okay, so here we are. <clears throat> um, sure enough, people probably, uh, you know, in the local Midwest area probably heard about the um, the uh, five-month or six-month-old baby that was shot and killed along with the father while changing the diaper. I believe he was changing her in his trunk or something like that, and um, you know, in Chicago. But uh, for those who hadn't heard, this happened yesterday or day before yesterday. Uh, but uh, Chicago, <clears throat> you know, one of the cities with the most stringent gun control laws. But this happens. So were these registered gun owners, law-abiding citizens who did this? No. They were outlaws operating outside the law, doing what the heck they felt like they wanted to do. More than likely, it was a hit. I mean... The mother of the child was shot in the leg when she was pregnant with her. And so it's almost as if this time the bullet had her name on it. Of course, she wasn't the target. It was the, the, the father, I'm guessing. So I'm guessing, you know, there was some money involved. Maybe it was a hit, you know, who knows. Uh, something like that has got to be a hit always. Or really, really personal. And, um... <clears throat> my my thing is once again this is you know everybody's hemming and hawing about gun control gun control gun control and uh, these the, this crime was committed by someone who by by people who don't care about it you know they don't care about the law because they operate outside of it so who. And I'm not saying that this guy probably would have had a better chance of living. You know, apparently he was ambushed. So I'm not saying he would have had a better chance of surviving if he was carrying a weapon or anything like that. Sometimes when, when it's your time, it's your time. But trying to limit everyone else who actually follows the law, those laws only hurt those people. Because obviously, these people who did this and those who commit crimes in other parts of the world, and uh, well, this nation, I'll just stick with this nation here, where everybody's hemming and hawing and, you know, got this large group of people trying to push for these restrictions and everything. Obviously, the safety of people is not the top priority in this, uh, with, with this agenda, and I'll call it just that, an agenda. Okay? And that's just one thing that, that you know, strikes me as, as funny. You know, not funny funny, but, you know, funny as in something smells fishy. I don't like it. You know, what kind of, uh, you know, what, what kind of outcome do people expect when those who actually abide by the law can no longer defend themselves? It's almost as if... <clears throat> It's almost as if the criminal elements of our society are almost being encouraged to do more, you know, especially as, as budgets get crunched and more people get let out of jails. And, you know, jail does things to people. And sometimes folks might have been in there for a bag of weed or something. But after being in there, if anybody been watching the documentaries, the, the place turns into an animal. It can turn into an animal. And so now they're coming out. And as the wolves are being systematically released on the sheeple, as I say, you know, to use that little uh, analogy, two things going to happen. Either sheepdogs come from amongst the sheep, or everybody becomes sheep and basically beg for their own enslavement beg for their own liberty to be taken away all in the name of security. <clears throat> so, again, whether you limit what law-abiding citizens can do with their firearms or what they can purchase or how they can purchase or how long they have to wait, it's not doing anything for people who operate outside the law. Okay? It's almost as if these things are encouraging, you know, the, the outlaw to to thrive, which they have always have. So is this really about our safety, or is it about 
basically creating a more controllable state <laughs> with less resistance to more drastic changes in the future. Secondly, you know what, I'll just do another video on that.